start the recording. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here and welcome to inclusive group work, fostering teamwork among diverse identity. Um, many employers feel that our undergraduate, um, the program, the undergraduate program don't adequately prepare students for teamwork and intercultural skills. A recent survey by the Association of American Colleges and University found that only about 39% of employer rates graduate as very well prepared for teamwork. So the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, ABET, has responded to this need by requiring engineering programs to demonstrate that their graduate have an ability to function on multidisciplinary teams. And not just for engineering or STEM field, many professionals demand that our graduate work in team. In general, students learn and retain knowledge better when working in teams than in lectures or other instructional format. However, the challenge of working effectively with multicultural and multidisciplinary teams remains. So today, we will explore some of the ideas about fostering teamwork skill through inclusive, high quality group assignment. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for joining me here today. My name is Lin Nguyen. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I have taught chemistry at NIU since 2016 at both their undergraduate and graduate levels. And this past June, I joined the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning as an inclusive teaching coordinator. Uh, although I am new to faculty development, I have over a decade of ex teaching experience in higher education at various private and public institution. And I am excited to have you here with me to discuss high quality group assignment and what they can do to foster interpersonal skills for our students and better prepare them for the team oriented um, workplace. So thank you for being here. Since uh, we're going to spend some time together, let's find out how diverse we are in terms of our disciplines and expertise. Please tell us your discipline and what you hope to get out of the workshop in a few words. Please feel free to unmute and introduce yourself, or you can type your responses in, in the chat. Uh, I budget a few minutes for this, so let's get to know us. So I guess I'll go first. I'm Ralph Wheeler. I am a professor of chemistry. Uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, I should say I'm also Lynn Nguyen's husband. Um, I do group work in my classes, and I have discovered that there are some issues. Um, certain groups of students do better than others, and so I want to resolve those issues. Thank you, Ralph. I'm Lindsay Vreeland. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, it's to also disclose, uh, I also work at CIDL with Lynn. Um, my desk is the one you can see behind her. Um, that's that's my dog on the wall. So, um, but I'm here because I've used group work a lot as as a teacher, but also we have to work with uh, groups a lot in our jobs. And I think that it's useful to not only see how I can uh, make group work as someone who's going to be in charge of the group, but also as someone who's going to be a participant. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate that. I think um, the picture of your dog make my background look a lot better. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Nia Chen. Um, I'm an assistant professor from industrial and systems engineering. Um, I joined this, uh, I took this workshop um, to hope to learn more about um, how design activities in my class to facilitate the, the learning of um, teamwork and how to facilitate teamwork uh, building. So really appreciate uh, Dr. Nguyen to provide this uh, workshop here. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I, I hope that the engineering professor that we have here later, there's plenty of opportunity. I hope you share with us your experience with group work. Have you used it? How do you use it? Or have you, are you planning to use it in the future? So thank you for joining us. Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Rizela Feliciano. I use pronouns she, her, ella. I'm from the mathematics department. And I do a lot of group work, but I always struggle on how to create groups that are useful for them and where they feel comfortable and having like a good balance on who works with who and how how to just select them in a more meaningful way. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I think we have a couple more um, people. Yeah. I'm Kevin Palencia. I'm from the math department. And I'm, I mean, I'm here because, I mean, calculus classes, we're starting to do some group work uh, in the classes. Um, I mean, we're, I'm trying to find kind of like effective ways uh, to engage the students in this group work. Um, yeah, that's basically what I'm here. So know more about, about that. Yeah. Kevin, do you have very large classes? Not large in, I mean, we have some that are large, but we are not implementing the group work. I see. In those classes. So just in this more one. So it will be great if there is something about large classes. Uh, yes, we see large classes always a challenge. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I'm curious. Yeah. Um, so I think we have one more person, uh, maybe two. Hi, <clears throat> yeah, this is Susan Bowers. I'm from um, Family and Consumer Sciences. And um, yeah, I just, um, I, I would really like to learn more about this just topic in general. Welcome. I'm Alicia, um, last name Diggs. I am in the uh, biomedical engineering program uh, and that's run through the uh, mechanical engineering department. I primarily teach uh, online, well, I would say all of my experience so far, uh, at least at this university has been online. Uh, we do group work. And I think the thing that I'm interested in is trying to find a balance between um, allowing students uh, to choose their groups, uh, just because that seems to work in terms of students being more excited about you know what they're doing and who they're working with but at the same time uh, making sure that the groups are inclusive uh, which tends to suffer a little bit uh, because we tend to maybe gravitate toward who we know or uh, who we feel comfortable with but that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone has that opportunity uh, and then also balancing it with uh, being able to have students work with, uh, I guess this falls under inclusivity, uh, but having mm -hmm. them work with students who are different, um, more so uh, making sure that the, the groups are not only inclusive, but diverse, uh, just because we tend to learn more when we work with people who either think differently or uh, you know have different backgrounds. Yeah, thank you, Alicia, and thank you so much for sharing that background with us. So today, <clears throat> I'm going to present to you some of the practices that were uh, studied and proven to be effective, but it's by all means, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. It's meant to provide you some um, provoking question thoughts so that you can take what you hear from this workshop and apply it to your discipline, to your course, to your, to your student. So with that in mind, um, 
I want to set a, a field learning objective for this workshop. So we seen, we know that there are ample evidence that our collective intelligence when we work together on teams outperform even the highest achieving individual intelligence. And we learned that in the animal kingdom from bees, ants, near cats to elephant, we see the powerful result of collective intelligence when the world come together to address COVID-19 pandemic or global climate issue. However, it takes intention and preparation um, to cultivate effective view of team and collective intelligence. So the goal for our workshop is for you to be able to um, take away the four things, how to design high quality team assignment, uh, carefully construct diverse team, um, tell this team, tell the student why they need to do what you ask to, what you ask them to do as teams and not individual. Because you're trying to teach them, prepare them for the team-oriented workplace in the future, right? Um, explain to your student and teach them the interpersonal skill that is essential to be successful in, in the future workplace. And uh, I'm going to show you some research that show being attentive to others' needs actually increases group intelligence. So being thoughtful, being kind is a strength, not a weakness. And students should value team members who have good social perceptiveness. Um, and the last thing I hope you can take away from this is uh, assess your team member in an equitable way. Um, and we will talk a little bit about how we can assess the individual accountability at the same time, um, encourage and measure the positive interdependence among the team member. Um, last month, I gave a workshop on equitable grading, and I plan to give the same workshop again. So if you miss it, please keep a lookout for the upcoming workshop from Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning for that equitable grading uh, workshop. So um, learning objective number one, or one, design high quality group assignment. Effective student teamwork rely heavily on well thought out team assignment. Um, there's various studies show that poor student behavior during teamwork is often the result of inadequate assignment, not problematic group dynamics. So to ensure successful teamwork, team assignment should serve a clear purpose um, that's a also align with the course learning objective, the course outcome. The grading criteria should also align with the course learning objective. And then um, it should require individual accountability, but at the same time foster positive interdependence, which is what necessary for collective intelligence um, among team to really work. So um, I'm giving you this example. Um, if you, if someone give this student um, this team assignment as a team, we showed the impact of the 2010 Gulf oil spill on the environment. Prepare a 10-page written report and present your findings to the class. So, do you think this is a high-quality group assignment? Um, why or why not? And how can we make such team assignment or group assignment like this better? Anyone want to take this? What you like to unmute yourself or type in the chat? Do you think this is a high quality group assignment? Ralph, I'm going to call on you. Ralph, do you, what do you think? OK. I just typed, okay. in, I just typed in the chat. <laughs> I see. That's that my, perfect. My students, my students would need to have this task broken down into smaller pieces, I think. Yes. Thank you for that. So um, I think you, you have experience teaching um, using team assignment, right? So you know that most students would need the task to be broken down a little bit instead of just general like this. So let's see. Um, 
what my student would do often is just split it up. One person doing its slide with no flow. I see. Yep, that's another potential issue. So um, there's many study out there that pointed out as a group assignment, uh, a really good high quality group assignment early in the term should include relatively simple but well-defined tasks that require specific products so students can concentrate on the mechanic of teamwork. So for example, we can expand on this group assignment by saying collectively your team should identify important area to study. And you can give them a few example, biological impact on plants and fish, how oil settle or this disperse in water, impact on shoreline, etc. And then each team member should research a different area, prepare a two-page overview, and describe the impact to the rest of the team. So now you give the student very well-defined tasks, right? But then they still have to work together to come up with the consensus areas to study. <clears throat> yes, Ralph. Would you also recommend um, setting some intermediate deadlines when they turn in drafts to you and yes. give them the opportunity to improve? Yep, yep. So uh, you way ahead of me, but yes, uh, I will mention that later on. So right now, I just um, kind of want to introduce what what um, high quality assignments look um, should look like. But thank you for that. So um, so this. Um, you allow the student to have a, a specific task, right? And then also is allow you as the instructor to award point based on how well the student work as an individual and together as a team to accomplish this list of uh, consensus area of study. So as the term progresses, the instructor um, can assign more complex and ambitious tasks that promote higher level of thinking. Um, in the more complex state of the team project, define individual versus team accountability. So in this example, each team member should conduct research on a consensus area of study for the oil spill, report back to the team, collectively write a cohesive introduction and summary, and put together a presentation that describes the overall impact of a 2010 Gulf oil spill on the environment, the local economy, and public policy. Um, and also, please um, maybe consider randomly calling on any team member to present the final report during the class presentation. This practice can foster individual accountability and positive interdependence. So for the first learning objective, I just want to introduce you um, to what a high quality group assignment look like uh, with the specific criteria that I presented early on. Um, and then as we go on, there are going to be more component that you need to um, add it to your team assignment. So um, if you um, have used group assignment in your discipline, would you like to share with the group what your group assignment look like? Um, and if you have not offered group assignment in your course, do you plan to use it? Um, how does your group provide positive impact on students, especially on women underrepresented minority in terms of achievement and attitude in your field? And uh, yeah, once again, feel free to unmute and share. Um, we have a good group of uh, people from engineering, from science, and uh, art. I'll um, start. So I guess I didn't say that my background is from um, composition and from gender studies. So uh, I'm. It's kind of cool to have so many people from STEM in here because. I'm interested in seeing how we're doing things differently, but also probably the same. It sounds like we're having a lot of the same problems. Um, but traditionally, I would do a group project that would be like a research-based project where uh, students in the composition program would 
uh, pick a topic, pick maybe a problem, and then research it together. And at one version, they co-wrote a paper that doesn't really work out very well when you have a bunch of people that don't trust each other to uh, write together. So it developed into them breaking up into researching very specific things um, and sharing that research, but then writing their own papers. And it's never really been amazing. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I guess I'm interested in seeing if there's a way to get a, uh, a, a, a version of it that works more times than doesn't, I guess, better statistics. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think the hard, one of the hardest thing is how do you foster individual accountability, but at the same time, foster positive interdependence. Um, and that is a challenge. Anybody else want to share? Um, I would like to share something. I I am going to teach a course that I have taught in the past, and it's for math teachers. And they have a mathematical investigation. I did that individually, but then they will discuss these with in small groups for feedback. So the group component for that project was to have uh, several days in our class to go over the ideas of that mathematical investigation or like a research that they do. They investigate and work with a problem. They just explore the problem. And then students in small groups will give them feedback. Uh, they didn't have a specific grade for just giving the feedback, but it, it was important for the individual projects. I don't know if this is um, helping, but um, it was kind of like a individual group, but it did had a, an important group component. I see. Thank you for sharing that with us. That sound like um, that does sound like you're trying to foster both right individual accountability and together the the interdependence within a group as well. Okay, so um, those I think those are really good group assignment to start with. That's why we're here and we continue to challenge our ideas and our thought to make our group assignment better, right? So I'm gonna move on and um, give you the summary of uh, I put this together after reading a lot of research on how to construct diverse team, and um, now that we kind of have an idea of. Uh, that's a team project is complex enough that an individual an individual would not be able to complete it successfully by themselves. Um, creating student team that work well is another critical aspect of using high quality group assignment in a classroom effectively. So important thing to consider in this regard, including the number of your student in a team and the level of diversity on your student team uh, and whether or not um, the student decide the membership or the instructor are gonna decide the membership. So in general, a smaller team better facilitate individual accountability and allow for more flexible scheduling when our class activity are required. On the other hand, larger team have the potential for more resources more ideas and more points of view to be brought to the problem. So uh, the general good practice guideline is um, that team of three to five students work best. Um, with smaller team, recommended for short-term activity or simple tasks and larger team uh, is recommended for long-term and more complex um, activity. So that one thing to consider. Um, another thing that you should consider when you construct um, diverse team, and it's unfortunate that the word diversity often narrowly view only in terms of gender diversity or minority status. So I intentionally use the more technical term heterogeneous team to emphasize the strength of a broad ability, backgrounds, experience, and problem solving perspective. 
And if you are a fan of the Hidden Brand podcast like I am, I recommend you check out the episode, The Secret to Great Team, where psychologist and professor Anita Woolley of Carnegie Mellon University were interviewed. So one of the groundbreaking findings in her career on collective intelligence is having more women in the group raises collective intelligence. Now, in the early stage of her career, she said collective intelligence was more strongly correlated with members' social sensitivity and a proportion of female in the team than with the team members' individual intelligence. I thought that was really fascinating. Um, she later carefully avoided the female proportion, positive correlation with collective intelligence and only emphasize on the social perception or the social sensitivity and attemptedness. So there ample evidence that when women or minority are outnumbered in team, their team participation can be negatively affected because their opinion may not be considered valid by the team member or maybe they may be assigned unimportant tasks. So that's something that um, I think when you help students construct team, I think you should keep that in mind. Um, so now I want to, I, I hope some of you share with us, how do you construct your diverse team? Uh, what do you consider when you construct a team? Um, do you consider any of the practical and equitable issue? Um, yeah, share with the group. Um, please share with the group some of your thought on um, this, the, the thing that I just shared with you. OK, <clears throat> I can go first. Um, sure. So I've done um, at least uh, each of those other options. You, It was on the other slide in terms of how we are uh, assigning teams. I've done random assignments. I've let, uh, and when I'm, I mean literal random, using a random number generator, you know, having the students' names in a list, and then according to whichever numbers are uh, pulled by the generator, that's who gets into a group. I've let students uh, self-select and then I've assigned students. And when I'm assigning students, it's usually because I'm finding that there are there's a there's a divide in the class uh, usually uh, between high performing students and uh, those who don't perform as well. And Sometimes it's difficult for me to determine if uh, the students who don't perform as well are not because, uh, I don't know, they're uncomfortable speaking out. Like I said, this is an online class. So a lot of time, there's a lot of emphasis on uh, communication, uh, verbal communication uh, within the class. And so if, for instance, some students uh, are a little shy about that, uh, maybe they don't participate uh, sometimes I can't tell if uh, those students who aren't performing well aren't performing well because they are not <clears throat> prepared, I meaning they didn't read their assignments, they didn't prep for class, or they're not understanding. And what I've learned just with one-on-one -on -one conversations, um, I guess there's some intimidation factor that's there, probably because I'm away from them as opposed to, you know, having that sort of tactile um, experience meeting me in person. So maybe it feels a little intimidating. So I try to uh, mix groups up. Uh, I'll put high achieving with lower achieving. Um, sometimes I'll put, uh, put it according to interest um, and who I think can benefit the most um, from learning what they can based on who else is in the group, if that makes sense. I see. Thank you for sharing your perspective, Alicia. I, I think online classes come with their, another level of challenges. And, mm -hmm. and are you seeing some of that? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, 
I'll just say really quickly, sometimes I um, have students, like I'll, I'll pre-assign a, a general topic, but they get to choose like what they want to do within the that um, sort of area. And so I'll do, I'll put them in groups based off of what their interests are then, if they want to talk about whatever topic so that they then aren't resentful um, and maybe have like a better attitude going into the group. But also sometimes um, when classes are in person, I will put them together with people who have a similar tracts. Like if they're, uh, you know, maybe there's two people from engineering, I'll put them together with not only the intent of like, you know, like, thinking about the the class at hand, but also like thinking about how can I create community for them to like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have outside of my classroom. Like they might have class together right now, but they don't realize it. So how can I sort of yeah. uh, help that happen too? Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So that so you do consider some practical and equitable issue here, because the practical thing is if they share a lot of classes in the same engineering program, they can help each other and, and get to know each other. Um, so Nichen say, I have done self-selected and randomly selected team making. From my own experience, students prefer their self-selected team. That usually because they have been working together from many of the teamwork course project too. Yeah, thank you. And I assume that um, this is, you're talking about engineering student, right? So they probably have experience um, working in group together from multiple courses. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, I think engineering is ahead of the game when it comes to teaching our student um, teamwork skill and how to work collectively um, to, to perform a higher task. So I want to introduce you to a tool called Team Maker. So it's really easy. You can just do a Google search of catme.org or type in www.catme.org. Org. So this is a wonderful tool for forming team. If you don't have time or don't want to survey your student yourself, you can actually um, take a look at their, their question and you can specify the criteria of how you want CATME to, to help you put your student team together. So I recommend that you check it out and play with it um, and see if you could use it for your courses. Oh, and I will send out um, a copy of the PowerPoint slide with the reference for the research that I use um, in this um, presentation so that you can have um, some reference. So um, based on many study, these are some practical and equitable issues that, that you may want to consider when you con construct your diverse team. So. Typically, team work best when members of team have complementary skill set. So uh, a survey that you can give your student at the beginning of the semester or have your student take the survey tool on CatMe, the team maker tool. Um, and then you can use that data to place student in team that, that for a specific reason that you do want um, to design. So Kevin shared that in my classes, the students select their groups. Some of them know each other from past and they work together. Yeah, so that um, certainly have the advantage, right? So students know each other. So if you have outside of class activity, um, they more likely to get together easier and, and work together. Um, so uh, back to some of the good practices based on research on um, how to construct diverse team. Uh, I mentioned about teams should have complementary skill set. Other thing is minority or, or women, especially women in STEM. Um, consider that um, putting at least um, at least 
a peer and a team. So back to Anita Woodley's study, the, the psychologist from Carnegie Mellon University who studied collective intelligence. In her work, she showed that collective intelligence decreases when you place only one woman in a team. So um, we have some data to back that up. So try at least have a peer of minority or woman in a team so that um, they can um, create social support for, for each other. Um, other thing to consider, a member team do not have conflict evening schedule. Once again, that for easy um, scheduling of our class activity. Uh, first year student in this study, um, they recommend that first year student who leave off campus are placed on the same team because they often empathize with one another living situation. Um, so that's something to to consider. However, with the fact that after the pandemic, most first year students at least on NIU campus, I believe they live on campus. So um, that may or may not plays a big role. Um, also, before the pandemic, the study the study were conducted before the pandemic. So it's suggested to place students who live near each other on team for ease of of meetings. This is similar to what Lindsay doing by playing people who have the same major, taking the same classes on teams so that they can meet with each other more frequently. Um, but these days with various virtual meeting option, this practice of placing students who live near each other for ease of meeting may or may not be relevant these days. And the last one, uh, last but not least, according to this study, don't force students who don't want to work with each other to be on the same team. So if student clearly stated a preference not to work with a particular classmate, then uh, we should honor that for the productivity of the whole team. So these are a few things for you to consider. Now, um, I want to move on a little quickly so we can talk about learning objective number three, how important it is to, to teamwork or interpersonal, uh, interpersonal skill to a student. So the ability of team members to work effectively together can evolve over time as a student acquire interpersonal skill, but you have to help them get there. You have to help them acquire the interpersonal skill. The four stages of teamwork um, evolution are forming, storming, norming, and performing. So in forming is characterized by orientation to the team and dependence on other why storming is often marked by conflict and resistant to group influence. Now this resistance is overcome in the norming, norming stage during which cohesiveness develop and new roles are adopted. And finally, in the performing stage, the team can focus on the task and, and structure can now become supported of task performance. So it's a very important for you to tell your student that the team most likely, uh, like very likely, <laughs> to experience conflicts as they first work together. So for you, the instructor, um, you need to provide students with ways to deal with those conflicts. So explain to your student that not only do they need to learn practical skill um, in, for working in a team, but they also need to learn civic values um, that include commitment to the common good, to the well-being of other members, a sense of responsibility to contribute one fair share of work, respect for the effort of others, um, caring for other member, compassion, etc. So those are some of the civic values um, for the team to honor. And in the next slide, uh, we will discuss some strategies so that you can help your student uh, come up with their own list of the strategy that would help um, they have a successful team experience. Um, so here are some good strategy to help your student learn interpersonal skill and have a successful teamwork experience. 
So consider devoting a portion of your first class um, to team building activity or consider developing an initial assignment asking the team to reflect on the characteristic of a successful team. Ask them what do they think would make a successful team or consider having your student complete a, a learning style questionnaire and then have them reflect on the team result, um, like write an essay projecting what issue they, they might foresee happen, um, or consider creating a, a simple script depicting common team dilemmas and invite students to role play the situation, discuss the challenges they have encountered, and have them guide them work together to generate a list of strategy for resolving conflicts. So some of those um, strategies are listed here. Invite your students to think about the role they tend to play within the teams and uh, make conscious effort to be mindful of others. For example, if somebody usually talks, maybe invite them to take a step back and listen. Um, ask a student to be aware of how gender, cultural background, socioeconomic status, and life experience could affect the team members' performance. Um, and then encourage students to assume that the team member are doing their best. So that's intent, right? Assume everybody have an intention that they want the team to succeed. However, a team also must acknowledge the negative impact of individual behavior that can affect the team effort. And when that happens, um, together the team needs to address their behavior as soon as they, they arise. Um, some more. Um, teamwork, communication skill. Um, they need, you need to help them set rule. They need to communicate clearly, directly, respectfully in meeting, um, and uh, also help them set expectations, schedule, uh, goals. This is something that Ralph mentioned early on. Um, and then team members should also be considerate of each other's schedule and be prepared to make sacrifices. So this is the compassion. Uh, they need to sometimes understand that if you have a working mom in your group, if you have somebody who have to care for their aging uh, parents, um, then you may have to need to rearrange your schedule and make accommodation in a plan to accommodate everybody needs. Um, plan, agenda, assign action item, um, utilize diverse skill and interest for maximize productivity. So how do you do this with your student? I, um, this, this study suggests that you need to check in with teams and observe their dynamics um, and, and detect and correct any issue. So consider scheduling meeting with each team during your office hour or consider being present during team meeting. And uh, please keep in mind that team dynamic may, may vary based on members' background. Um, team from collective culture may be more cooperative than team from individualistic one. And also it um, would be beneficial to the student if you um, be mindful of the gender typical dynamic exhibit by women, such as women tend to um, feel easier to admit to vulnerability. Um, also, the, the perception of ability. So if you have female student in STEM, maybe consider coaching female student to take ownership of their ideas, speak confidently, and demand technical and leadership role. Uh, these practices can help achieve student success in teams. Okay, all right. I'm gonna pause here for just a moment. Um, that was a lot of information that was suggested. I, did, I summarized it in um, this slide for you, but I wanted to pause and see if anybody have any questions. Okay. 
All right. So moving on to learning objective number four, equitably assess student team. So um, I only have three points here. It's important to provide times and guidance for team to examine how they are working together. So um, that would be encouraging and allowing time for team processing. Consider asking questions that allow students to reflect on their own and their peer contribution to team. Um, consider allowing time for team processing in class, debriefing in class, and discussing potential issue with the whole class to prevent conflict of um, conflict and confusion. And um, use peer evaluation. Peer evaluation can be useful both to provide feedback and to improve team in interaction while the teamwork is progress. And also peer evaluation can be used to measure individual accountability um, in the, the student grade. Consider distributing peer evaluation at multiple points during the term so that your student can learn how to score their teammates and get used to share anonymous rating uh, with teammates. And um, at the end of the term, the instructor, you can factor the student rating into the overall grade or adjust each student team score by a multiplier that based on the rating to reflect the team contribution. And once again, if you go to catme.org, it's have um, a tool. Um, I show you the, an example of a peer evaluation here so that student within a team can um, evaluate the teammate in an anonymous way. It won't be anonymous to you, but it would be anonymous to your student. So that's another very useful tool that you should check out. Um, so collaboration is important. Um, we uh, collectively, our collective intelligence is better than any individual intelligence. So group work shouldn't be a void. However, a group grade um, doesn't indicate whether individual students have mastered a standard. Um, so that's why to be fair and equitable um, and have student grade reflect their learning, um, is it recommended that individual grade should be assigned even for group work? Okay, so now that we went over all the different good practices that help us foster um, inclusive teamwork, I want to pause here and ask each of you to reflect on um, this question. How would the below practices prepare your student for a team-focused workplace? So these are the four learning objectives that we just uh, discussed. One, develop high-quality group assignment. Two, being mindfully and purposefully construct diverse team and diverse in terms of not just racial, minority status and gender uh, diverse, but in terms of ability, experiences, um, and, and uh, choices that they make, and different um, problem solving perspective. And then uh, embrace social attentiveness and interpersonal skill in teamwork because it's been proven that if you have team member who show the ability to have social atten attentiveness, then collectively that team perform better. And then the last thing is equitably assess your student team by providing individual grade, even for group assignment. So if you have a lot of thoughts, will you please um, share with the whole group? Um, this is Nhi Chen from uh, ISYE. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, you know, by 
by implementing those by implementing those um, team building and uh, evaluation, uh, you know, individual evaluation methodologies in in the group work, the, the student can also learn from us not only you know about the course topic but also learn about how to pick their own group mates or teammates better in their future work um, because eventually once they're out of the school they might start as a, a um, as a junior uh, as a junior engineer but in eventually become a senior engineer and then a manager and perhaps a uh, mid or high level manager in their company so eventually they'll have to build up their own team and lead a team so i think that way it will also help them learn how to build a team and how to construct a team um, yeah. um i also want to add that uh, building the team diversity it it is something that uh, uh, i definitely uh, agree with and and value so um I think I first I've read something else similar to this to is to use um, I believe it's called using MTBI personality evaluation. Mm -hmm. So everyone got their own sort of a coding for their personality, and then you know you mix them up to to form a team. But that that is not based on race or gender, but rather on the uh, personality. So, but but I think the idea is is similar. Um, yeah. Could you share that in the chat with everyone, the tool that you use? Is that something you developed or is it available online that people can go and check it out? The personality um, assessment. Personality. Oh, it's not yeah. something that I build, uh, but uh, something that I have used. Uh, let, let me check it out and find Yeah, because I think that's great. That's a really great um tool so um if you can um take a couple minutes find it and put it in a chat to share with everyone i would really appreciate that and i hope you do share this with your student i hope that you tell the student why you ask them to work in team you you do tell them do you tell them that later they may be the manager and need to form team i hope you share everything that you just said with your student too yes uh, yeah we'll do that yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, great. Thank you. So Nichen put in the chat the 16personality.com. Uh, That's another tool that, that you may want to check out. I will check it out later. I did not know about this tool, so I really appreciate that you let me know. Do you know if it's based on a Myers Briggs personality test, or is that something different? Oh, I believe they're similar to Myers, right? The Myers personality. Yeah, yeah My I Myers Briggs. I think you, you end up with the NJIT kind of thing. It looks yes, like it's the same. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you for bringing it up. Uh, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I think the Myers Briggs type indicator stands for M M uh, mm -hmm. BTI. Yes, MBTI. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for thank that you up. so much for sharing that. So yeah, um, so can't me one tool you could use this um, 16 personality is another tool you could use. And everything that presented here just mean to provoke your thinking provoke your thought, so that you can go out there and challenge your own idea and thought and and create a group assignment that best serve your student. So um, there's a question in the chat. I was going to ask about this. How do you get information you need of student skill demographic? Um, you know, you can even, um, if you have small class, if you don't have like 200 students, maybe you can um, construct a survey at the early in the semester and ask the question that that you um, that that you want, so that you can specifically construct the team for your class. But the other tool would be the personality or the cat me team maker. Okay, bye, Ralph. 
and now he has to leave because our son have uh, an appointment <laughs> so we have to go get of Tommy. Okay, so um, I put all the resources that I built this presentation based on in this slide, and I will send a copy of the PowerPoint presentation to all the attendees um, today for your um, reference. And thank you so much again for joining me today to discuss equitable um, and, and uh, inclusive good group work. And if you have any question, this, this is my contact information. I am as the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. And um, yeah, Lindsay shared in the chat that she used Qualtrics for surveying students. Yes, Qualtrics is a wonderful tool. And um, if you haven't played with it, I re recommend that you check it out and then you can build your own survey with Qualtrics. So uh, we have a few minutes left. I'm going to stop the recording here. But if you have any question, 